question is from Tiffany Cipriani 9708 who writes, I just completed splint therapy 24 seven wear. It has improved my symptoms greatly. However, now I have an open bite and will be starting Invisalign. I think my joints have improved with function. However, I still have discomfort coming from the muscles. I am bothered more so at rest than I am with eating and I've attempted massage which provides relief. Question is, does an open bite develop due to changes within the joint structures or is it from wearing the splint and can Invisalign be beneficial in decreasing muscle spasms? There's so many ways of thinking and treatment out there that honestly it's confusing the best route to take from a patient's perspective. What an excellent, well thought out and articulate question. I can tell you that this is a very common problem those of us who do our best to treat TMJ problems always have to wrestle with. We know that if a patient's symptoms are due to the overloading of the joint structures because the bite configuration doesn't match the best position for optimal joint loading mechanics, then we have to deprogram or decouple that learned jaw position from the feeling of the teeth fitting together. Most of us do this by constructing some type of orthotic device or bite splint that slightly changes the habitual biting or closure position so that the joints are not loaded or compressed every single time the person's teeth come together as in swallowing or clenching. So if your symptoms are better after splint therapy, then the orthotic did what it was supposed to do. But if your bite doesn't match up anymore, then you now have a choice to make. Do you stop wearing the orthotic and allow the structures to go back toward their original configuration based on habitual movement, parafunctional and postural patterns, or do you alter the bite mechanics permanently through what has historically been called phase two therapy, which could be occlusal equilibration, orthodontics, restorative dentistry, or sometimes orthognathic surgery. And the choice depends on the details of your particular case. So here I feel like I need to tell you all a story. About 12 years ago, when I started going through training on how to treat these TMJ problems, I had a conversation with another dentist who was going through the same process I was going through. He's a little bit further along in that process, a little bit older than me, had been in practice for a little bit longer. And he told me that you can't make, you can't possibly make a living just making splints for your patients, that the real money comes when you do the orthodontics or restorative work. Now, needless to say, this was troubling to me because my practice had been kind of based on making orthotics and dealing therapeutically with jaw position and function. But it was also a troubling philosophically because I didn't feel like it was right to deliberately change people's bites in order so that I could do the more financially beneficial treatments of restorative dentistry or orthodontics. Now this is not to say that any dentists out there have nefarious intent or deliberately are taking you down this path so that they can get more money out of you. But the truth of the matter is that splint therapy and functional jaw rehabilitation, which is what my practice is focused on, is just not as lucrative. It's not as financially rewarding as doing restorative dentistry or orthodontics. That's just a fact. So I would say that the system is broken and the system needs to get repaired or fixed or revamped. But in the meantime, it's buyer beware. You have to know how to ask the right questions ahead of time and your providers, your dentists, your doctors are responsible for giving you informed consent and alerting you of the risks and the benefits associated with any proposed treatment. So before you start orthotic therapy, you should already know what the objective is. Are we trying to get your jaw joints to function better and at the end have a bite that's reasonable and that you can use to chew food effectively? Or are we gonna take it as an unavoidable side effect that if we fix your jaw, it's gonna change your bite and we're gonna to have to address that down the road as well. Either way, you need to know this up front, and that's a question that you need to ask before you start any sort of TMJ therapy. Now I can tell you that the way I try to minimize this outcome in my practice, and I actually built this into my TMJ rehab program, which you can find on the app, we usually have our patients begin wearing their orthotic as close to 24 seven as possible with the exception of eating and of course cleaning the teeth. Rather than having my patients wear the orthotic during chewing, which is the primary function of the jaw, we have our patients practice chewing exercises during the entire program, beginning with a very soft diet, chewing very slowly and mindfully without any tooth contact, and then progressing all the way to biting into and chewing an apple. This happens over the course of 12 weeks. And my idea here is to encourage the functional movement patterns to rewire as the joint structures are healing. 
and this engages the patient in an active process as well with deliberate intent to optimize these patterns. At this point, if you want to do an experiment to see if your bite improves over time, you can download my app and just follow the program, but you don't need to go back to 24-7 wear of your splint. Start with the wear reduction protocol in week one, and then do the exercises in the order that they're presented. If after 12 weeks your bite still feels the same, then you probably need some type of phase two therapy. I know that was a long answer, but I hope it helps, and thanks for the question.